Um, right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, just before I start going through uh, the, what I really wanted to, to show you this afternoon, uh, I just have to go through a very quick legal bit, so bear with me a second. Uh, this webinar is for information and education only. Nothing said, not said or implied is a solicitation to buy, sell, trade or not trade in any vehicle whatsoever. Um, and please note that I am not a registered financial advisor. Right got through that. Thanks very much for, for joining me. I don't want to go on for too long. So what I'm going to do is briefly introduce myself. Uh, then we'll go and have a look at a few charts. Uh, we'll look at some Forex. We'll look at gold, silver, bonds. Um, somebody's asked me to have a quick look at Tesla as well. Um, and what I want to try and do is show how the methodology that I use can make uh, charts readable and accessible to anyone. And just one other thing, questions, I'm going to leave to the end if that's okay. Um, I really do get into a sort of a, a monkey trying to pedal a bicycle while playing a banjo kind of situation if I'm trying to answer uh, questions as well. So I'm going to leave those right to the end. Okay, very quickly a few words about me. Uh, for, for, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ben Drage, and as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm British, uh, I'm based in the UK. A uh, little bit of my background, I read law at Oxford University and started working in 1982 in the City of London, and I was working in the money markets. Um, I stayed there 16 years in various boutique firms, um, looking at uh, the, basically the nascent interest rate swap market in those days. Uh, I left in 98 in order to concentrate on my own trading, and that's pretty much what uh, I've been doing since then. Um, that has sort of led me through to teaching a little bit and therefore setting up uh, Forex Analytics. Um, that's pretty much what I've been at since then. Right, now we've got that out of the way, um, let's go and have a look at some charts. And uh, I'm going to try and show you what I mean uh, when I talk about decoding the markets. Um, first of all, I'm a very simple person. I, I need, I must have, I live for... Uh, clear, uncluttered charts. Um, the one you can see in front of you is just purely some lines on the chart. I've got no MACD, I've got no RSI, I've got no volume, moving averages, Bollinger Bands, Elliott Wave, which I still don't understand. Um, what I'm looking at is price, pure and simple. Um, really just trying to take all the derivatives out of it and go back to look at the basis of the market. Um, and median line analysis is all about making patterns clear and understandable. Right. The chart you're looking at is Aussie dollar, and I guess most people, uh, if you're not sick of it already, you can probably see what's going on with it. You can see that there's resistance up here. This is the upper parallel. You can see we've had support down here at uh, the lower parallel, and price has moved up to uh, this area here, the median line, which has previously been a little bit of resistance, as you can see, and a little bit of support. Great. That's all well and good. If you saw that chart in front of you, if somebody said to you, this is what we've got, I'm guessing that most people could probably look at it with some kind of conviction, and you could actually trade that with conviction. You can see what's going on there. Let me show you the same chart. That's without any lines added onto it. That is, again, a daily chart of the Aussie dollar, exactly the same as the one we had before, exactly the same scale, but we don't have the lines that I put on it. I guess most people would probably start looking at it in, in terms of analysis. They draw lines, maybe horizontal across there. I can see another horizontal across there. You might also see um, a line coming up from that low through that high and kind of a support line. You know, it's, it's not bad. It's not perfect. It's, uh, it could be a little bit better, shall we say. So what I want to show you is purely by using pitchforks, median line analysis, all we're going to do is go down from a low here up to a high down to a low again, and we've got a fork, which is beginning to show us a little bit of support and resistance. If I just draw a parallel in the line of the fork across there, you can see it, that it looks as though we're hitting resistance there quite nicely. That, that's not too bad. Um, thing is, we can do a little bit better than that, because as you can see, underneath the market, underneath the lower parallel, price is kind of getting away from us a wee bit. So all I'm going to do is just change the angle of the fork, just change it very, very slightly uh, using one of the other uh, pitchforks that we use, one of the other kinds, still using this the same pivots, the A, B, the C. Just going to flip that round like that, and there you go. That all of a sudden is what is the chart that you've been seeing on the previous uh, example on the on the previous page. All I'm doing is just using these pivots A, B, and C, and putting in something which can which can give you context, which which can let you understand what's going on. You know, that's without it. We understand when we see the, the pitchfork in place why we got uh, support at this level. We can understand why we got resistance at this level. And we can also understand why we got one high there and a higher high up there. Let me just put that back on. 
there you go putting it back into place once more again hopefully you can see how that works and uh, you, you can see that that is a reasonably uh, easy way to to chart something again no macd's no bollinger bands no volume nothing like that um what I also try and do is take things across time frames as well. I'm going to move from Aussie on the daily basis. We're going to go and have a quick look at it up on the weekly. This this is the weekly chart. Um, the period that you've been looking at previously was just was this little bit back here. And again, what I want to try and do is just take my pitchfork across here, just very simply. I'm not going to wait, spend all your time doing this, but just go A, B, C, like that. All of a sudden, what we've got going on comes into perspective. People can begin to understand why you saw resistance in these levels here, sorry, where you saw support along these levels here, why you started to see resistance, if I draw that in, across there. You're running in the line of the fork, the angle of the fork. The holy grail of trading or investing is, is to find likely areas of support and resistance. Uh, and that, and when you've done that, you can start to trade with the confidence that I was speaking about earlier. Um, looking for these patterns is why we actually uh, use charts. We're looking for patterns. Our brains are set up to actually recognize patterns and respond to them. Um, when you see one of these patterns, when you go and have a look at this uh, 240 minute chart, or sorry, this daily chart of Aussie dollar, you can understand what's going on. You can see it. Um, it becomes familiar. You can trade with it. Right, let me look at a couple of others, uh, show you what I mean on those. I'm going to go over to the financial world here. Let's go and have a look at uh, the DAX. This is DAX on a 60-minute chart. Um, the, the German DAX is one of those really wild uh, animals. It's up and down all the time like anything. Again, hopefully you, you're seeing here, you can reasonably well understand what's going on. You, you, you can see that uh, very simple ABC like that. We're talking, again, just supports and resistances. You can see the way that price has moved up. If you look here, a little bit of subtlety, you've got a bit of hesitation here at the median line of the fork. We push up above that. Again, just look at this line that we've drawn through all this series of lows across here. Again, we move above that, we come back down, we find support on it, and up we go again. Once more, resistance in this line here, it just works. Resistance there, we fell back a bit, went up and touched it again. Once more, we hit resistance. What's happened here is that the quartile of the fork, that's halfway between the upper parallel the median line, you've got a quartile there, you've got one there. This quartile acted as a bit of resistance. You can see my arrow. When we moved up above it, we came back down, we found support along there. Okay, what are we looking at now? We're looking to see what continues. We're going to see if uh, support continues along this quartile. We're going to see if resistance continues along that uh, line there. Um, and all we're, all we're going to be doing is we're looking for the strength of trend within the fork. Um, if price pushes to the upside in a fork that's going upwards, it's strengthening in trend. If it comes to the downside, it's weakening in trend. And the likelihood uh, of, or, or should we say, the once you can tell which, what trend is doing, the probabilities of being able to trade something is massively, massively uh, increased. OK, bonds. ZB, the US 30-year bond. Um, I've rolled this back slightly. Um, so th this, again, is on a daily basis, I should say. I've rolled this back slightly so we've got more volume to come. But I just want to show you um, the way of thinking, how, how we sort of start putting things together uh, when we see uh, uh, a chart such as this. Again, you know, most people are going to be looking at horizontals. They're going to be looking at horizontals across there. They might actually think, OK, yeah, we've got a bit of a move to the upside. Let's Let's go like that. You know, and just see what happens. Once more, what I'm going to try and do is just put things into a little bit more uh, technique, a little bit more nuance by using the pitchfork again. We just go down to a low. We go up to a high there. We come down to a low once more. And all of a sudden, I hope you're beginning to see what I was talking about. You're beginning to see why we're getting support. You're beginning to see why we're getting resistance. And you might even take things on a little bit more subtly than that. What you might be able to uh, begin to discern is the fact that uh, if we start off um, up here, you can see our resistance is up at the quartile. OK, this next little peak, we push up, we go horizontally. We're higher than the previous peak there, but we're beneath the quartile. OK, our first peak was at it. There's a little bit of a gap when we're, we're lower. We're a lower high in terms of the fork. Again, here, when we move up again, horizontally, we're still further up, but we're a little bit lower. Whoops. We're a little bit lower uh, just in terms of the fork. The pitchfork resistance has moved again. Ditto down here. Once more, it's lower again. When support when resistance moves to the downside, no great shock. Support also moves to the downside. So we begin to lose the uh, the the. the the strength of this fork. When we start seeing that happening, we start looking the other way. I'm just going to 
make this a little bit paler so we can see what's going on. Again, we start to see, sorry, it's jiggling around like a maniac now. There we go. We start to see price moving to the downside. So what I'm gonna do is then just take another fork to the downside, A, go down here to a B, go up there to a C, and because I like my down forks to be red, I'm gonna color it red, and we'll look and see how price moves in that. I don't know why it's bouncing around so much, guys. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Let's just t try and take it through a little bit. There we go. This is basically what what we're finding with the fork. We had a little bit of a movement up above the upper parallel there. I'm, all I'm going to do is just draw a line parallel to the fork. And that does, I hope you'll agree, just catch a, quite a lot of these highs here. And again, price has just moved to the downside off these. Um, in terms of where, what we're looking in support, well, I think most people, and I know a number of you have been to these uh, webinars before, you probably know that what, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw a line across there, just going to copy it from a low to another low, and I'm going to say that is where we are at the moment. We are running in this fork. We're running between resistance just above the upper parallel. We're running in support across here. We're between support and resistance. We can, we can say that we've got a channel so if price comes back down to this level here about 149.20 i'm going to anticipate a bit of a bounce if it pushes up to 152.25 that sort of area i'm going to anticipate a bit of uh, resistance coming in and we'll look to see how price moves in terms of this fork again if we just go back to to what i was showing earlier in the blue fork you can see these lowered highs all the way were matched with with lower lows as well the low here is just beneath the quartile then it's down here along the blue lower parallel and then we start dipping underneath it it's even it's lower once more what we're doing is uh, we are we, we're constructing a framework so that you can see what is going on in terms of uh, the charts here okay gonna go and switch to something else something I've been uh, tweeting about a little bit recently and uh, that is Swedish krona um, I know this is probably not something that most people are pretty familiar with. They, they tend not to uh, to look at it too much. It's actually worked tremendously well. That's Swedish Krona on a daily basis. Um, I'm not. I'm just not just going to go through the whys and wherefores of it. But looking at the daily chart, we we're anticipating. A, uh, sorry, looking at the weekly chart, we we're anticipating a little bit of a move to the upside. What I'm going to do here is just take the. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to get rid of that what I'm going to do first of all just look at it in terms of horizontals quite nice across there you'll, you'll find we are picking up support on that you know I, I don't always um, give a bad word say bad words about horizontals occasionally they work here was one of those occasions um, if we take a line from the highs back there you can see we've got resistance whoops let's just get that in the right place there you go resistance across there uh, you know it's not perfect um, we've begun to move to the upside about it I think most people looking at this kind of triangular formation would be beginning to get a little bit interested in it um, because we saw some support on the weekly chart we started looking in terms of a fork to the upside on the daily okay so there we go a up there B there and coming all the way down to this low there C all of a sudden what do we find support exactly at this line if we didn't have that fork there you would have absolutely no idea that that was going to be a support that that was an area to start looking into in terms of our support let me just put that back in and you can see look even, even though we've come down from uh, right up here which is 945.80 we've hit that virtually perfectly at 814.00 um, little move to the upside on that but what I said, as I said with the Aussie dollar a little bit earlier on, I'm not just looking at things in isolation. I'm also, I've also been looking at the Swedish krona uh, on the 60 minute, and uh, we've been looking really at this move to the downside here. Let me just show you that. Again, I've got rid of uh, all the, 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 the data that we've had on here. Again, I've just put a circle in there to remind me where I start off from, because uh, I'm looking at quite a lot of charts, and if I blank them all out, it could get pretty silly as I, as I start drawing the wrong things. Okay, A... B, C, like that. As I always do, I have my downforks red. Not bad, it's not perfect. Um, what we started seeing was a bit of a move up and above and out of the fork like this, okay? So what I did was I just changed it very slightly to the modified shift that you, we, we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, I showed you this on the uh, one, one of the other charts, uh, on the Aussie, in fact, it was. Here you go, price begins to move underneath the, med the, the lower parallel, sorry, the median line, that is now our resistance. We move a little bit lower down to the lower parallel, start to begin 
to move up a bit again we hit support down there we start to go across we start to go across the fork remembering that our resistance was here at the median line what's going to happen here we start pushing away from it and then once more we pick up our support and go up and through and here we go we've had a nice move to the upside what are we going to do as a result of that we're going to start drawing a fork to the upside a b c like that and let me just go in a little bit tighter on it so you can see how we go and this is what we've been following the last couple of days uh, or so um, here we go price has been moving really nicely in the blue fork we move up above the upper parallel of the red fork start pushing higher and there we go that's what we have at the moment um, this move up here from 8 just under 812 is already up to 825 so that is a really really long way in uh, in Swedish krona um, and again this is this is the move higher that we saw from the daily chart all we did was we took it down to a 60 minute chart we started finding a way to get long here along this lower parallel price moves to the upside and there we go let me just remind you with that that is on the uh, the 4th of January uh, 812 or so is the level on there let me just go to the daily chart here just show you what I mean down here 812 on the 4th of January okay so what we effectively did was we used a 60 minute chart to get into a huge great uh, daily fork here and I mean this fork if price goes up to the upper parallel and I'm not saying it will um, you know that's up at 1027 or so that, that is a huge 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 thousands of points higher okay what I'm not doing, and please don't get the, the, the wrong impression, is I'm not one of those people that say if you get get support at the median line, you've got a whatever 80% chance of hitting the, court, the the median line. If you go above the median line, then you've got a 47.3 chance of hitting the upper parallel. I don't go through that at all. Um, what, what what I'm looking at at the moment is uh, is purely supports and resistances. Um, the chart is bullish as long as it stays above support. It is going to be bearish if it moves underneath resistance. Okay, right. Let's go on from that one. That's uh, Swedish Krona. Um, look, that, that's just a very quick look at uh, three or four charts. Um, whether you're a newbie or a seasoned professional, remember the, the the key thing here is when you can see the pattern in a chart, you can understand what's happening in the chart. When you understand what's happening in the chart, you can minimize your risk. You can then trade the chart with much more confidence. And there's just one other thing um, that maybe I alluded to very slightly here, particularly you know with something like this uh, the, this Swedish Krona. I mean. I bet you 95% of traders never got long into that because they just did not see it. They did not have this fork in place um, telling them that this was a likely spot to get long. And they didn't have the the option of going down to a 60 minute chart like this, um, of getting long along the lower parallel here with a really small stop and already getting an absolute massive return uh, for their money on that. Um, OK, I'm just going to pause a second. I'm going to have a slurp of water and then I'm going to go on to have a look at some gold and silver, which I know a lot of people have asked me to do that. So hang on just one sec. OK, I'm back. Um, just remind you again, guys, there's a whole load of questions have come in. I'm, I'm going to look at those at the end, if that's all right. I'm not going to try and uh, play banjo while driving a unicycle or something. OK, let's go over and look at gold and silver. Um, particular interest of mine, uh, both gold and silver. I do run a, a service which looks exclusively at them. So uh, um, I, I really do try and keep on, on top of what is going on on the gold, gold market, silver market. Um, this is gold on the weekly. Again, I've done my usual trick. I've just got rid of all the uh, supports, resistances, uh, the forks, everything. Um, I think everyone is looking at this line, aren't they? From the all-time high through there, we've got that. We're we're up above it. We're in we're in clover. Um, we're moving to the upside. It's all really good. Yeah, that's great. We can do a lot better than that. Okay, we can do a lot better than that by just taking hold of a pitchfork again. And this is a chart that we have been looking at, or I've been looking at, for years. It feels like donkey's years. But there you go. A B see like that again I'm going to turn it red because I like my pitchforks to be red I'm going to change it into a modified shift like that okay still using the same pivots a b c um, and if you have a quick look at what we're seeing across here hopefully hopefully you can follow what, what, what I'm uh, looking at we can see the support and again let me just fill in the outer quarter there we're getting support uh, along the lower parallel let me just in broad strokes this is as we don't really have time to go through everything but look broad strokes you can see support down there at the median line we move higher our support moves up to this line across here that's the sorry that's the lower parallel support moves up to the median line here we move up again what are we seeing we're beginning to see a little bit more uh, support there at the quartile we push a little bit higher and higher up we go we're up above 
the outer par the, the upper parallel. Do I mind? Not particularly. No, I, I got to say I don't, because what we're looking at, we're, we're trying to run in the line of the fork. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just run a line in the same angle as the fork across there. Okay. That green line is parallel to these lines. And what I'm picking up here, what we've been talking about for quite some time, is the resistance there. And again, going to take one of my little arrows. The resistance there turning to support and turning to support. And anybody who knows uh, anything about uh, about charts knows that when support, when resistance turns to support, that's bullish. Great. Let me just add one thing to it. And I'm sure a lot of people are, are, have already noticed this. If I go and run another parallel line off that high up there, look where we are. You see that? Resistance there, just up above that. So again, this is what we've been seeing the last move up in, in sterling. Uh, sorry, last move up in gold. It's moved from support here all the way up to resistance. Every single bit of the, the way here, we were anticipating this resistance to the upside. Okay, And it worked out pretty much perfectly. We're just falling away a little bit from that at the moment. Um, Right, I just saw the corner of my eye, somebody said, what about an up fork? Well, yeah, we can do up forks. We do down forks, we do up forks. <laughs> Whatever you want, we, we, we can do them. Oh, hang on, I've lost the line there. Let me just put that back in. Um, let's get rid of these arrows. They don't like me. There we go. Right, let's go with a little up fork. Um, we're gonna take it back here. We're gonna go A. No, we're not, because that's the wrong place. Let me start again. We're going to go A, B, C, like that. Okay, just going to get rid of these lines because they're just obscuring a little bit about what we've seen. Well, what's going on here? Why, why did we move up from here? We had another reason. Looking at this fork, again, I'm just going to draw a parallel line previous to what we had, similar to what we had previously. I hope you're seeing that that support is just pushing taking price to the upside what i can also do i'm just going to go in a little bit tighter on this as well look at this resistance here this was the last area of resistance i'm going to take another parallel line and just move it across there okay i hope you you're you're beginning to see how we're, we're put, trying to put pictures together um we had let me just move back and get my green lines back on the to the downside uh, we had resistance down here uh, Hold on, there we go. Actually, I'm, you know what? I'm going to turn that to a purple line so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, let me just make that a bit darker. There you go. Right, we had resistance here. We moved above it, came to support. Down we came here, support two from two zones. Okay, we had support, down fork and an up fork. We found our support. We move up here. We had resistance along there. We also had resistance from there. Again, these are slightly, I'm drawing them pretty quickly, so it's a little bit of inaccuracy, but again, I just hope you're seeing what, what I'm uh, trying to trying to show you there. Support and resistance given by two different methods. Great. Let, let me take it down a little bit from that. Let's go and have a look at uh, shorter time frames. That's the weekly. Uh, a lot of people I know are going to be looking at the daily. Uh, again, let me play my little uh, game with you here. Um, this is Daily going back uh, right the way through 2016 mainly. Um, why are we doing what we're doing? Why is uh, why are we seeing resistance? Why are we seeing support? What's happened here? Why are we fallen away? Again, just take the fork. Let's go down to the low there. We go A, B, C. And I know you're all saying, but that doesn't really work. That's not too great. Absolutely not. Let's look at this little high here. Show you how we found that that was going to be a high. We move the fork like that. Resistance there. OK, that's, it's the same fork, it's from the same pivots, but that doesn't really help us with what's going on down here, does it? So all we can do, take the fork again, just move it a little bit more. There you go, like that. And that is our that is the support that we were following uh, down here. We had some previous, let me just go in a little bit tighter on this. Is that this, this fork has been running very, very nicely for us recently. Um, let me just show you this support across here. I'm going to draw, draw it off that low, draw a line there. Can you see all these lines of support all the way across there? That was giving us okay once we fell underneath that there was nothing in the way until we got to the lower parallel we fell underneath it on for one day okay we, we were talking about support um at 12:43. that was the lower parallel we fell underneath it to 12:38 during one day five bucks underneath it and then steam to the upside the very next day we found support bang on that line and since then prices moved up from 12:38 to 13:28. so uh, even i can work out that that's about 90 uh, 90 bucks or so 
One more thing, a couple of eagle-eyed ones of you will no doubt mention, notice this as, as well. Resistance, cross there. Okay, it's not very difficult. Support there, resistance there. Again, you know, just with a few um, strokes of uh, the, the, the computer here, just putting a few lines on it. Hopefully, I made made this make a little bit more sense than it does. And again, you know, I say again, looking at what you have, looking at uh, uh, the purely price with supports and resistances coming through, really does work very, very nicely indeed. Now, somebody said to me, um, can we go and have a look at some of the shorter dated stuff? 60 minute, let's go and have a look at gold on 60 minute. Um, this is a chart we've been using in the, uh, to, to, I hope some people have been trading off it anyway. Um, 60 minute, obviously very, very tight chart here. You can see what we've been looking at. Uh, the median line, the reason it's called median line analysis is because we're kind of balanced around the median line. You can see the, the support that we got down here out of this warning line exactly matches the resistance that we found up there. Okay, They're equidistant from that median line. They're equidistant from the median line. That is telling us the path of price. That is showing us which way price is moving. And as we did a little bit earlier with the Aussie dollar, and this is a little bit messy because uh, we, we've actually got uh, some fairly tight lines here. But what you, I hope you can see is we're getting lower highs in terms of the fork. Okay, This high is out here at the warning line. Even though this high was horizontally a little bit more, it didn't get up to this warning line once more. It, to do that, it would have had to move up to 1331. It only got up to 1327. So just four bucks difference there tells us that potentially we're about to roll to the downside. We're going to move a little bit lower. So we start being great. I'm sorry about this. I really am. Um, as I said, judicious cutting will be done and hopefully the uh, the end product will look a lot better than this. I'm really, really sorry, guys. Um, OK, I just got I was talking about uh, gold 20 minutes. Hopefully everything's still very much in line. Um, what I was saying was, look, this fork that we, that we drew in here gives us really nice support and resistance. Uh, I'm looking for continued Oh, I can't actually update things because I'll tell you what, um, I'm going to move on. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at resistance up along this upper parallel here. I'm looking at support just above the median line that we've got there. Hang on, it's just all slipped because everything does this when you start up from scratch. There you go. There's the fork. Resistance there, support down here. That's what I've been looking at. Let me switch over. Let me go and have a look at uh, silver and see how far we get through on that one. Um... Again, look, that is the 20. I was going to get to that later. Uh, let me go up and have a look at uh, silver on a daily basis. Again, I'm not going to show you all the magic, but look, this is this is what we're looking at in terms of a down fork. If I just get rid of the fork uh, quickly here, you can see price is moving to the downside. Um, precisely why we have these resistances, precisely why have we have these supports where we are, and in particular, these arrowed resistances, one, two, three, three and of course the current move which goes from there to there or we move from here up to here why is, why is that all happening nice and simple really get ourselves a little fork in a b c up to there turn it red as i always like to do on my down forks let me just change that across and again hopefully this is just framing what what has been going on you can see the reason we have resistance there along the quartile it's the same level as that, same level as that, and once more, this is where we're anticipating the move. We know this chart has been working. We know it's been really good because lower parallel down there, upper parallel up here, resistances. Uh, I'm, I'm slightly out on them. They are very precise. They are, in fact, very precise. I've just drawn this slightly incorrectly for some reason or other, probably because I've had two power cuts. But look, I think you get the basic idea that just by putting a fork in, by framing the pattern, by showing what we have there, we start to begin, uh, we, we begin to get a little bit of support resistance on that one. If we look at the other chart that we've been looking at on in terms of a daily, uh, again, once more, you can see resistance upper parallel, support down there at the lower parallel. Prices move from the lower parallel up to the median line. Um, I know what everyone's going to say, yeah, but you went underneath the, the lower parallel here. Well, yeah, but we also went above the upper parallel. Again, it comes back down to the median line. We're radiating around the median line. As above, so beneath. Okay, And it wasn't a, a massive difference anyway. Look, uh, the line is at, uh, where is that, 1582. We went as low as 1565. So, you know, not that far. A few, a few cents or so. Um, what I think... I can also say is, look, we, we don't look at this in isolation. You don't look at a single chart in isolation. You're looking at it in terms of uh, what we're seeing across other time frames as well. 
Again, I'm just going to take it down, have a quick look at uh, what we're seeing on the 60. It, it's very similar to what we're seeing with gold here. Uh, price is just beginning to see lower resistance in the line of the fork from up here at the outer quartile, a little bit lower there, then there, then here. You can, you can just see we're beginning to roll out. I mean, if I get rid of all the... Uh, everything there, what you see is that price has reached a high and we're rounding over and moving to the downside. We, we would have found this, um, if I undo the delete, bring it back, the first point that we would have known that we were rounding off would have been here, 1729, before we'd even reached the apex in terms of uh, the, the horizontals. Okay, just put the little horizontal across there. That was the level that we, th we thought we were rounding off. Okay, not before it happened over like that. So what do we do again? Uh, sorry, let me just go over. Again, we just start drawing something to the downside. Um, this is what I got. Just move from the 60 minute to the 20 minute. Uh, we're a little bit out of date, so let me just refresh that and see if we're bouncing around. There we go. Um, once more, what have we got? We've got resistance. Yeah, it's just above the upper parallel, but look, the line follows the, 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 the line of the fork. The fork is showing the path of price. Resistance that amount above is the same as resistance there, and we fall away a little bit. In terms of support, looking at that line across there, not absolutely perfect, but, you know, this is a matter of uh, the line at 1696, the low there is one cent lower, 1695. It moves to the upside from that. What are we going to look at? Well, we're going to look and see how we go in terms of support and resistance. Um, you could make an argument that says, our resistance was up here at the green side in parallel there. The next time we found resistance, it was that much lower. That means until this the line of this high gets taken out, until we see a, a, a bit of a move up above this line across here, then we've got lowered lows. Okay, If price suddenly dips to the downside from here, we'll have another lower low. We'll put another uh, arrow in like that. And that'll be another bit of resistance. We're just watching stronger or weaker in terms of the thread of the, of the uh, shred as we move. The strength of trend there. Let's go over to something else. Um, platinum. Somebody said, could I just have a quick look at platinum again? Let me just uh, show you what we got on that. Once more, look, this is a huge rate move from platinum that we got. Uh, this is going back to 2008. That's our high. We're just looking at what's going on down here. Most people, I guess would probably take a line through there and that high across there. Doesn't really help very much at the moment. They'd also take a horizontal across from there. And maybe that's a little bit more helpful, but not great. As I've said before, once or twice, we can just do a little bit better. Again, going to take my pitchfork tool, go to the all-time high up there. Again, come down. I'm going to look at a little bit of support. Hang on, let's just get that in place there resistance up there one two three i'm going to turn that red which is what i like to do hang on just adjust it very very slightly okay because we're talking in such fine margins you really do need to, to to get things very well adjusted you can see a b c like that what have we got resistance at the upper parallel up there we've got resistance at the upper parallel there we've got support at the lower parallel there what again we've got is similar to what we found in when we looked at the gold chart on the weekly. You've got support. The support was down here at the, at the lower parallel. It steps up a little bit to the median line. Okay, up there it moves even higher up to the quartile there. Lo and behold, what's happening? We've now hit resistance on two occasions at the upper parallel there. Where are we now? We are pushing to try and push up above that. We're bang on that line. We are absolutely at long term trend line resistance which goes all the way back to this high back in 2008. Okay, that's platinum on a weekly. Um, are we looking at things to the upside? Yep, but we, we don't have anything particularly um, clear yet. Let me just put that in. That, that is uh, platinum on a daily, a little bit messy because we've got a few lines uh, we're not 100% sure about. Drew the fork in here. Seems to be working quite nicely. That green side in parallel there. You can see a whole line of support there. You can see a whole line of resistance along the median line as well. It's very early, but I quite like the way this is going. Uh, and there is price bang on the median line at the moment. I guess what you'd say is as long as we stay above this line, we're going to be bullish. If we start moving to the downside, we're going to be a little bit bearish. Um, but, you know, that is that is the cost of things. That is, that is uh, what we have to look at. Nobody, I mean, anyone that says they know where platinum is going to be 
is either a fool or they're lying or possibly both. And I'm, I'm not even going to say what I think about people that might believe them. The charts tell us that platinum is finely balanced between support and resistance right now. Right, um, where am I going to go from there? Um, I'm, I'm basically running out of steam uh, at the moment. Um, look, that's that a quick th run through some interesting charts anyway. Um, I hope that for some of you who are more used to lagging indicators like RSI and things like that, it uh, might have been a little bit of an eye-opener how we can actually project forward just using simple supports and resistances. Um, what we're looking to do in or what all technical analysis tries to do is find likely areas of support, likely areas of resistance. And that really is what uh, Forex analytics is all about. I, I try and produce clear and uncluttered charts. Maybe this uh, daily one is not the best example, but, but certainly this uh, weekly one of platinum, I hope, is. Um, Again, as I said before, once you see the pattern on a chart, you can understand the chart, and in turn, you can successfully trade the chart. And I can guarantee, as I said earlier, 95% of the people who um, are looking at platinum are not seeing what, uh, what we're seeing. Right, so if you like what you see today and you'd like to actually um, come to more webinars which don't have me um, disappearing in the middle of it for, for a few minutes, um, Please go and check out the website if you haven't already done so, www.forex-analytics.com. Um, there's some more videos there, there's some more information, and if you think that the methodology um, can, he can help you, either with your trading or your investing, um, please think about giving the analysis service a try. Um, as I said earlier, we, we've got one which looks at precious metals, uh, the other one, which is a more general one, looks at forex, commodities, indices, and the precious metals. Um, I do video analysis most mor every morning for each of those. Um, also, we have uh, chat rooms where I, I post probably in something in the region of about 60, 70 charts a day, um, and you can post your own as, as well and just uh, you know do as you will with that. And we also have a couple of uh, webinars every week as well. Um, that is pretty much what I wanted to say, um, except for the, the, the fact that, uh, and I hate doing all this, but we've, we've got a New Year deal on the go at the moment. You can get one month's access to the service for 50 bucks. And if you like what you see, um, I hope you'll stay longer from that than, than just the one month. But if you decide it's not for you, you let me know within the first two weeks, then uh, I'm, I'll be very happy to re refund uh, the $50 in full. Um, we've also got some reduced pricing on one-to-one -one mentoring, if you think you're interested in that at all. Um, so there you go. I hope you've given, given you a bit of an idea of what it is I look to do. Uh, I'm trying to simplify the charts, trying to put the moves that we see into an understandable and a tradable context. Um, I think that the methodology has got great benefits for traders and investors. Um, and I do appreciate that for many people out there, it, it does... It does. It is a bit of a step out of the mainstream. Um, but there's a quote that I really like, which says, if you want to have a better performance than the crowd, you have to do things differently to the crowd. Hopefully, I've shown you that that's what uh, I can actually do. Right. Um, there are a whole load of questions. I'm going to have a slurp of water. I'm going to come back in just a tick and answer that. I'm not having a power cut. I'm just going to go and have some water. Hang on a sec. Okay, there, there are quite a lot of questions coming, so I'm, I'm just sort of picking between them a little bit. Um, somebody... Cameron, I think it was, uh, asked me if I'd have a look at Tesla. He emailed me beforehand, so I said uh, I was happy to do that. Um, hang on a sec. Uh, where are we? Tesla. There you go. Weekly Tesla. Going to play my little game once more. Moving to the upside. All very nice. Uh, I think everybody could probably see this. I've posted it a few times into, uh, into Twitter. I expect most people have seen that. ABC, like that. What do we have? Absolutely lovely. Um, if this kind of thing you like lower parallel support upper parallel resistance we're beginning to get some action going along the uh, just underneath the median line uh, if we look at the where we go support you see that little bit of resistance that we got there just look at that line resistance across there it's providing us with a bit of support this week tesla has pushed to the upside you want to see where it's going to go um, if you're bullish you want to see price establishing itself back up above the median line at 327 or so um just across there, as you can see, we had some previous support. Going to look to see if price can move up and above that. Um, I guess what you could say is bullish Tesla as long as we stay above the green line 310 or so. Um, oh, hang on. Cameron's just put in. It was You wanted Twitter. <laughs> Twitter, yeah. Look, Twitter is somebody, it is a share that people absolutely loathe. I like it. I think it's, I think it's done absolutely brilliantly. Um, Twitter on the weekly chart, if you look at that, has been in a massive, massive, massive downtrend. OK, it's been bottoming for two years. It's beginning to move to the upside. Have a look here on the daily. We've just got the simple ABC. 
look what's happening all of a sudden. We, we're beginning to find things happening in the line of the fork, in the line of it. We've moved from just underneath the lower parallel here, there you go, all the way up. This line of resistance was previously support, then it was resistance, then it's support once more. You could say, and I hate them, that that is a reverse, inverse head and shoulders. Okay, shoulder there, head there, shoulder there. It's not on the horizontal, it's on an angle, because everything I do is in the angle of uh, the movement of price. But you've got a reverse head and shoulders there. Um, price has moved up. As I say, we got the support there. We got, oh, hang on a sec, sorry. If it's not the electricity, it's my voice. We're really doing well here. Um, what I was saying was, look, the resistance there turns to support. Price moves to the upside. Once more, resistance across that line, across that line. We pushed up through it, nearly to the median line. We've come back. Looks like we're going to find continued support there. As long as we stay above this line, 23.95, we could continue to the upside with Twitter. Okay, that's the line in the sand. I'm not going to say we're definitely going to move beneath it. I'm not saying we're definitely staying above it. The way I look at, uh, uh, at I would even call them predictions, um, likely outcomes. As long as we're above 23.95, we're bullish. If we go beneath that, if this line starts to become resistance once more, I'm bearish. Okay, there you go. Um, oh, somebody's always asking. Somebody, I, with a name like that, I, ha I had to go for that question. Somebody called Moose. I, I hope your parents didn't actually call you that. I hope it's a, a handle of some kind. <laughs> Um, can we have a look at, at gas? Yeah, natural gas has been a right one recently, hasn't it? Um, what do we got? Oh, I know, natural gas. Let's, let's have a look at the 60. Um, there we are, which which has actually been running pretty well. Um, again, because I didn't save my PC, I've lost a bit of data. Let me just uh, update that. There you go. Okay, natural gas. Um, it had a big fall off that we've, we've been watching um, in terms of the daily and so forth. But the 60 here has been working really, really well. Yeah, we were up above the, the upper parallel there. But look where we are down here, support. You see, we're balanced, again, balanced around that median line. As we went above, so we came underneath. And this is where we found our, our support. Um, what are we seeing at the moment? What, what can we uh, deduce from this? Well, we've got a fairly negative slant on things things are fairly negative because of this green sliding parallel okay it was support and it was support that stopped some a big 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 fall okay big strong bars tell you that there's lots happening so it stopped it there we got a bit of a bounce then we came through it okay we picked up all this support we moved up where do we find our resistance along that line okay anybody that's looking at this on the horizontal would not have a clue why this is happening you know they, they'd be running lines across here thinking what the heck and the line across here thing what it doesn't make any sense. You take it off the horizontal, you put it into the slope of the fork like this, um, it's running really, really nicely. Um, support becomes resistance. I'm a bit bearish until we get up and above this line. I would counter that by saying, just look at the support. Support, green side in parallel, green side in parallel there, little bit of support, little bit higher support, potentially bullish. If that follows through, if that takes us up to the green side in parallel, wouldn't surprise me if we move up a little bit through that. If we do move up and through it, look to see if that line becomes support once more. If it does, we, we're changing the trend. We're changing the trend from moving to the downside in terms of the fork. Even though we've got an up, up uh, sloping fork, we'll be changing it into uh, once more uh, an idea of, of beginning to move higher. We'd, we'd be stepping up, you know, the resistance, the support becomes resistance. If that becomes support again, that's bullish. We're going higher. Okay. Um, oh, Moose. Yeah. He also said, sorry, did that earlier as well. Um, okay. My gold and silver service. I also look at a lot of uh, the currency, a lot, lot of things in other currencies, gold and silver, uh, various currencies. Um, what do we got? CAD. Yes, if we can see gold and CAD. Again, I, this is something I put into uh, into Twitter a few weeks back, I think. Um, once more, I think it's running very, very nicely here. You can see we've got the fork going back to uh, where are we going? Back to this low, back in 2008. Price moving nicely to the upside. And again, look, we're running in the line. That's our resistance across there. This is our support here. Currently, we're a little bit concerned, as is most things in gold. For the, from 2016, that high there, we've got a lower high, we've got a lower high, we've got a lower high. Potentially now, we're finding a bit of resistance here at uh, the upper barrel of the fork. Be a little bit careful um, as to how we go with that. Mind your support. It's been the same level. But effectively, what you've got is you've got a descending 
wedge like that in terms of the fork and in uh, in, in in terms of uh, actual horizontal levels as well so just be a little bit careful about that um for this to change what do we need to see you need to see gold up above 1663 that's the lower parallel you want to see it finding support across six, above that level and hopefully moving to the upside from that um just while we are here there's another chart that i really like on uh, gold in foreign currency that is gold in chinese yuan whoops there we go. Gold in Chinese yuan. Again, this is this is. I posted this to Twitter. Possibly the most important chart um, that you're going to see in terms of gold. Don't know. I don't know. What I really like about this is the way that uh, from this low here, you've got upper parallel perfect resistance, lower parallel perfect support. Um, you know, it could not be better than that. The, the, these charts, as I as I often put into um, Twitter, they don't do coincidences. This was the low. That is why we got a bid. Where are we now? We need to take out the green sun in parallel. Support there, support there. Currently, bit of resistance. You want to get above 8,600 uh, and move above that, turn that line back into support. If that is the case, gold is going to go up in Chinese yuan. And uh, no doubt, um, a lot of people are going to be looking at that and thinking uh, that it's good in the other currencies that we look at. Um, I did also say to Marv, I'd go and have a quick look at uh, oil. Um, CL60, let's just see what's been going. That, oh wow, yeah, it's popping quite nicely, isn't it? Um, okay, let me just make sure that uh, my chart is refreshed, just in case we've got any data while I was offline. No, nope, that's working quite nicely. Again, look, um, I think you're beginning to get the idea of, of, of what I'm talking about. Um, we've got the ABC, nice and simple. We start picking up support here. We just dip away a little bit, but then come back strongly into uh, the chart again. Again, slightly lower, slightly higher support. Instead of being down underneath, we're at the uh, at lower parallel itself we push up all the way to the median line then we start fading off just a little bit okay fading off a little bit to the lower parallel there that continues as support all the way up there bang where do we go up to resistance and that's the line of resistance we've been running across there let's see what happens um 62.23 is where i'm seeing the line the median line is up at 63.61 let's see how price goes in relation to that um in terms of the weekly yeah let's just have a quick look at where we are on weekly again we've been moving really nicely um pushing up above this sliding parallel the resistance up we go again on this chart anyone that was looking at weekly uh, support quartile 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 there and we moved up from 42 uh, we're up above 62 now so it's a 20 buck move um, nice and simple barely moved to the downside at all in that whole range um, right uh, Rachel said Kiwi Aussie New Zealand yep no problem um, actually that's that, I'm, I'm just gonna look at that on a monthly if uh, if that's all right let me just see what we got on here Aussie Kiwi Again, look, this this is just running absolutely beautifully. Um, been one of my favourite charts uh, for quite some time. Um, oh gosh, do, do, do I? Well, do I have to say his name? Yeah, of course. Lower parallel, lower parallel, median line resistance, median line resistance. We had a bit of a push up, but look, look what I was saying. Remember what I was saying about strong bars? There's something going on with strong bars. Look where that really big bar went up above it, came back down, finished at the median line, closed right there. Since then, we've been drifting to the downside. What am I anticipating for this? Well. Uh, I'm bullish. I expect it to go to higher as long as this quartile remains support in the quartile. A little bit underneath where we are now, about 108.73. Um, because it's a weekly chart, you know, I don't mind if price just dips very, very slightly. Um, you know, you, you can let a spike go every now and again. Um, but what I want to do is find support along here, the close of the week above 108.73. Um, if we do that, we can start to begin to think about price moving to the upside once more on that one. Um, then I've got a whole load of questions coming in now about ETFs. Pete, Nick, Sam. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I I do look at ETFs. I, I do look at equities, given that, uh, you know, I, I've shown you, I think, Twitter and, uh, what was it, Tesla as well. Um, let me just go and look at a couple of them. OIH, that, that's one that's been running really nicely. Hang on, where is that? That's on my financials page. OIH, there you go. Oil services, uh ETF again absolutely fantastic you know been been moving really nicely higher from this lower parallel look at that down at 23.99 it's just propelled us up to 28.69 I mean that that's just running beautifully where would I anticipate resistance well what I'm going to do I haven't got an awful lot of resistance I'm just going to run a line across there from that little high keep a watch on that 29.74 doesn't mean that, I th that it is definitely going to get there um you know 
but if it does, that is a line that I would certainly be uh, keeping a bit of a watch on. What else we got? Uh, just run a line off that high as well. Yeah, we, we're trying to climb above that. Um, let, let's put it like this. Let's say that if this line from that high, okay, if we can stay above this line, if this starts to become a bit of support, about 28, 27 or so, just a little bit underneath where we are, if that starts to become support, I'd certainly anticipate a move up uh, towards this level as well, 29.71 or so. Okay. Um, we look at some others. XLE, again, that's an energy one, been running very, very nicely here. Um, look at all this median line action. Price went up, came down. Again, just look at support along the median line, turning to a bit of resistance. I mean, give me a little bit of leeway. That's that's not absolutely perfect, but there you go. Worked pretty well. Um, what was pretty close, though, was this lower parallel, the way we came all the way down um, from up there, 78.70. We came down to 61.80 or so. Found that very, very nicely. From there, we're moving up, just getting towards the median line of the fork, 76.16. Um, going to anticipate a bit of resistance in this kind of area. I'm not going to say absolutely perfectly because I'm just looking um, at what happened previously. Um, you know, that resistance was just a little bit above, but I'm, I'm going to look to see how we go at about 76.18 up to about 76.80 or so. That's that's the kind of level that I'm going to look at um, on that ETF. Um, and just one other one, which which I think has been quite interesting, uh, DBA, the ag one, um, which again, here we go. Let me just show you this. This has been running very nicely. Uh, there we go. Again, been in a huge down... Uh, moves to the downside for quite some time. You can see if we take it all the way back, I mean, that goes up to the beginning of 2014. Okay, it's just a little bit neater if we start looking at what's happening here. Median line support, we start pushing up, we get a bit of resistance up there. We pick up our support, the support that was at the median line, it's now a little bit higher, it's up here at the quartile, and we push up. What are we running, where are we running into resistance? Well, it's not at the upper parallel anymore, it's just above. So we look at that, we run a line off that, again, in the angle of the fork. Um, I think it was last week we just came up, we hit that, we spent a couple of days there, didn't quite have the uh, the, the ability to break through, we just moved back to the downside once more. Um, why haven't I drawn an upside? Because we haven't actually broken through resistance yet. Why haven't I drawn anything to the upside? Haven't really broken through resistance yet. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to draw something, I guess you'd probably put something like that. Okay, just have a look and see how we go. If price did come back down, if it didn't get support here at the red upper parallel, I think I'd be looking uh, just to see if, if anything happened down here at, uh, at the lower parallel, about 1837 or so. Great, folks, I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm, I'm a, uh, my throat is beginning to give way. The last thing you want me to do is, is to continue uh, to, to mute myself. Um, thanks very much indeed for uh, for bearing with me. It is uh, it's not the kind of thing you want to happen all the time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of an edit on the video and I will send it out uh, to people as soon as I can. Uh, hopefully it hasn't disappointed too much. Um, Bottom line thing I wanted to say is just median line analysis. What I do, the, the, what the service I try and provide, it's all about making the patterns of the charts clear, trying to make those patterns understandable. When they're clear, when they're understandable, you can have confidence in what you're seeing, you can trade them. Okay. I think it's been, uh, sorry, I, I hope it's been helpful. My apologies if I didn't get through to all the questions, um, but thank you very much for bearing with me through all this.